then I'll take over when you, okay, great. Yeah, for that, for that item, yeah. Okay, um, uh, let's see. Welcome to the Amherst Historical Commission public meeting on Wednesday, April 21st, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. Based on Governor Baker's executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law General Laws Chapter 30A, Paragraph 20, and signed Thursday, March 12th, 2020. This uh, meeting is being held virtually using the Zoom platform. The public can listen to the proceedings by visiting the town's homepage and navigating to the town calendar toward the bottom of that page. Click on the meeting schedule for April 21st where the Zoom link and tel telephone connections can be found. My name is Jane Wald and as chair of the Amherst Historical Commission, I'm calling this meeting to order at 6.33 p.m. This meeting is being recorded and uh, minutes are being taken mm -hmm. and we'll need to discuss that. Yeah. Um, uh, but first I'll take attendance by roll call. Board members, as you hear your name called, unmute yourself, answer affirmatively, and then please place yourselves back on mute. Patricia Opp. Present. Robin Fordham. Present. Janet Marquardt. Present. Patty Startup. Present. And Jane Wald, I'm present too. Uh, a few uh, housekeeping comments. Uh, board members, if technical difficulties arise and we need to pause tempor temporarily to rectify the situation, um, we'll, we'll just pause and then continue the meeting when the, when the issue is resolved. If you have technical issues, please let uh, Ben know through the chat if that's available to you. Discussion may be suspended while the technical issues are addressed and the minutes will note if some kind of pause or disconnection has occurred. Um, please use the raise hand function to ask a question or make a comment. I'll see your raised hand and call on you to speak. Ben will... Um, assist me in keeping track of commission members who wish to be recognized. Uh, and then after speaking, um, please remute yourself. To members of the public, opportunity for public comment will be provided during the general public comment period and at other appropriate times throughout the meeting. Uh, please be aware the commission will take note of comments uh, but will not necessarily respond to them during the public comment period. If members of the public wish to make a comment during the public comment period, uh, you must join the meeting via the Zoom teleconferencing link or video conferencing link. As, uh, as explained earlier, these links can be found on the town homepage calendar listing and on the meeting agenda. Please indicate you wish to make a comment by clicking the raised hand button when public comment is solicited. If you have joined the Zoom meeting using a telephone, please indicate you wish to make a comment by pressing star nine on your telephone. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name and address uh, and put yourself back into mute when finished speaking. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes and at the discretion of the commission chair. So uh, with that, um, let's see, with that, we need to uh, decide on a, uh, a minute taking method or person. I can take minutes, that's fine. Thank you, Robin. Sure. Mm. Okay. Thanks, Robin. Um, have you taken minutes before for uh, this commission or other commissions or? I've taken minutes for other commissions. Um, is there a yeah. standard um, format? Um, not necessarily. Sometimes I find it easier to uh, work off the agenda. Yeah. Because it, cause it's already kind of like uh, right. labeled in that way. Um, but uh, otherwise, you know, I think the most important thing is to get re get the, record the votes if, yeah. if, if there are if there are votes, and otherwise, yeah. just kind of general so. summary of comments. Yep. Yeah, so yeah, Robin, great. when I was doing it, I just made a copy of the agenda and opened up the space and then took notes under each item. 
And that way I didn't have to retype any of the topics. It just Yeah, went. I don't know that I have quick access to the agenda on my computer right now, but that's fine. I can stick it in. I don't remember ever getting it. You just, if you just want to, if you guys want to highlight the, uh, the, the agenda headings as we go through them. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um, let's see. Well, th thanks very much for doing that. Um, so uh, first on the agenda it, um, is the topic announcements. Are there any <laughs> announcements? Um, here, let's see here. I have, uh, I have um, unanticipated items that maybe aren't quite announcements. So I guess I'll wait for that. Okay. And Robin, did you, did I see your hand? Yeah, oh, I just, um, I, I don't remember if I distributed this at uh, one point or not, but I believe uh, Preservation Mass did a really cool, and uh, it's recorded um, review of Macris Maps, um, which I just wanted to alert the commission mm -hmm. to check out because um, I've used Macris before, but I've never used the maps before. And, um, it's pretty cool to be able to click on on the map to get all the information from the oh. and see all the districts laid out. And, um, so I'll, if I'll make a note to try to send that link again. Oh, that does sound really helpful. Yeah, that does. yeah that's really it, cool. Is that available by going to the Macris um, web page? Or it was a. It was actually a preservation. I believe it was a preservation mask on um, one of their workshops, and it's recorded. So I'll find the video, oh, okay. and um, okay. and then you can you can watch it and kind of see. Mm -hmm. But it's a different. It, it's a different uh, URL. But I'll send it out. Make it okay. a note to myself here. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Actually, I did. I thought of another announcement, more of like a, right. a, a housekeeping type thing. I think. Um, I'm going to get in the habit of um, posting all the materials in what's called the document center on the town's website. So rather than like bombarding everyone with um, tons of PDFs in advance of every meeting, you know, in various emails here and there, I'll just, um, I guess, before each meeting, send a link to, to this um, and then uh, everything will be uploaded here. Um, and you can also get there through the, if you go to the um, historical commission and then on the, on the sidebar is like uh, for packets, you can click there. Cause that, it's gonna help me stay on track and keep track of all this stuff. And then I hope it's easier for you all to be able to look things up. Um, and it also creates a record of what what documents were discussed at each meeting. Um, so that can be found over here. And then you click here and it should work, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. And then you go to the packet for the meeting, so. Hey, Ben, I have a question. Is there a way, this is, that is so helpful. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering if there's a way to um, create a PDF of the full packet just because it does get um you know downloading 15 documents yeah, yeah. that's a good point um so that would basically be like one giant merged pdf yeah i mean as, as the, them, robin you don't have to download them you look at each one online that's what i, I do i meeting. know but but if you want to print them i mean i oh. you know Sometimes I like to have them printed out depending. Right. Um, it would just be nice to have that file in addition, you know? So, so yeah. I mean, I've, I've pulled uh, PDFs together in, you know, Acrobat before. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, in order for me to do it on my end, I'd have to download them all. So that's, that's right. the only right. Jan, did you have another comment, question? Yeah, um, I really liked that for this meeting. It was all in one place. One mm -hmm. on curious about is you were saying it is going to stay there for the permanent record because I often go back to meetings and try to look up something yeah um so they'll be there by date so we can go back and those documents will be kept yep yeah great yep. okay well that's even better that's yeah it's, it's the it's 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 the same way the uh the planning board and town council uh 
kind of keep track of their meetings. Um, it's, you know, the agenda, the minutes and the packets for, for each meeting. That's are, much easier than looking through your old emails, trying to yeah. find that one document you sent out at some point. That's Yeah, great. well, what I find myself doing is I go through my sent email to try to find mm -hmm. what I sent everyone. And then it's like, trying, <laughs> trying, it's hard to track down sometimes, so. Um, great, thanks. Yeah. Oops. That's great. Yeah, thank you, Ben. Um, all right, so we have a num we have minutes to approve. Quite a quite a few sets. Um, let's see. There are quite a few sets. Um, yeah. So I think. Um, do you, do you think some, any, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say. Um, I think all of these had been previously emailed out by either Jan or Jane. And then um, folks had an opportunity to, you know, look them over and some people provided some edits. Um, but then, and then I did send them out. So I, I'm not sure if folks had time to review them beforehand or if there was, um, we want to go over anything now. I think, uh, I'm, I'm thinking because I, I'm sure we've seen some of these, some have been edited. Um, yeah. I think it might be time consuming to, to just go one by one, but let's, but if there are um, changes in edits, uh, let's, uh, I'll just make a call for them right now. Um, mm -hmm. So Jan? Well, there are a lot of changes. I had edited all of these except one I hadn't seen and Jane Shuffler didn't Put in all the corrections and oh. I don't want to be like dissing on Jane but I worry that these become a permanent record and they don't show us in the best light if there are inaccuracies so I would I looked at them just today because I, I'm sorry I, I don't know if you had put them up earlier yeah um, and some of them I hadn't seen before and some of them I saw that things hadn't been fixed and I'm wondering if we could just approve them subject to one of us going through them again and just fine tooth combing for edits. I would be happy to do that. There's proofreading and there's also just kind of erroneous statements because she didn't always know what we were talking about. Uh -huh. So um, I, uh, I read all the ones that were in the packet today and I only had one correction from uh, Bang Bang, banks to bangs in the February minutes. And then the July minutes, I wasn't there, so I was going to abstain from those. But. Well, there were just other things that you don't necessarily notice. I mean, misspellings like lead instead of lead, and um, right. times when she referred to projects in an awkward way, like she keeps referring to the posts for the writer's walk instead of the signs and then the text. Mm -hmm. um, and using words that aren't quite the right verb for what we were doing, because she just wasn't familiar. She hadn't, you know, been through a lot of our processes before. So I just wanted to tweak them because they're they're going to stand for what we did. I don't know. So do should we? There are. Do you think there are? Do you think that misstatements rise to the level of? Um, no. not, not, be, not being approvable at this time? No, I don't think so. But I just think that for permanent record, they could be improved. But I, I don't think there's anything terribly false about them at all, no. Just in a little awkward and slightly mm -hmm. natural. I, I have a tendency to agree with Jan. And while there, there isn't any formative errors. I think there could be some clarification. Yeah. Um, and so I would be willing to approve them with the, the um, stipulation that if Jan is willing to um, go through and clarify that we could approve them. Or Pat, you could too. I mean, it doesn't have to be me. Anyone who... Well, we, we, we all could, but but I think I, I think we're kind of in a stymie here because yeah. basically they reflect the meeting, but there's some some tweaking that needs to be done. Um, if there's yeah. anything other than grammatical, should we not just delay the vote until the next meeting 
I mean, it seems odd to be approving them and then changing them other than, you know, changing a misspelling here or a verb agreement there. I, I tend to agree with Robin about that. Yeah. That let's just get them in the right shape and then approve them. Okay, but I can't work on those PDFs. So, um, and the and the things that I sent her for correction aren't complete because I haven't seen them all. So, could you send me Word docs of all of them then, and I'll go through and send them back to you corrected? Would that be okay? I know it makes more work for you. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, that's I even produce them as PDFs in the end and send them back to you to make it easier for you. Right, to right, right. About them. Yeah, um, I can track down the Word documents for the minutes. Or um, make the PDFs editable? Yeah, I, yeah, either way. Um, Online I, they aren't. Maybe if I downloaded them, they would be. They aren't when I'm working with them. No, I, th I think I, when I, I can click a box that says like convert to PDF when I upload things. Um, and I'm pretty sure they were in Word documents to begin with. Um, so I'll, I'll just track those down. OK. Yeah. Yeah, if, if that's if that becomes troublesome, uh, I'm happy to export them from PDF to Word. Right, right. I, yeah. I can do that and send that them. Is. Some A little formatting might be messed up, but. Right. Oh, you mean like download them and then export them? I could do that, I guess, if that's, if that's what you're thinking. Like that's take, I, yeah, okay. I hadn't thought of that, yeah. Um, why don't I try to do that first to save everybody trouble? That would be great, Jan. And um, I'm just going to add my two cents worth here. I think if I had known that I would be taking minutes and this kind of issue would be coming up, it would be it would be a little overwhelming, you know, to to feel that I was carrying the absolute truth of each meeting, both in essence and in word. Mm -hmm. um, and it's hard because as a new member, you just don't know the stuff that all the details. And I think um, well, that's we, why there's we, need to find a happy, we need to find a happy medium. Yeah. Um, I'm already taking minutes for another organization, so I just can't. Um, but this kind of conversation makes me think, I don't want to do with the minutes ever. <laughs> no, I mean, if we only had one set of minutes from the previous meeting each time, then you just yeah. discuss corrections and changes and you vote those in and it's done. It's just that we have so many and they're from so far back that we can't do it at this meeting. Yeah, if it were just luck. last meeting's minutes, it'd be a piece of cake, you know? Jane, do we need a uh, motion to delay the approval to the next meeting? If so, I so move. I, I don't think we do. I think we can okay. just table. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just table. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sure. All right. Um, West Cemetery Signage and Restoration Project Overview. Oh, and thank you, Jan. Yes, Jan. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I can't guarantee they'll be perfect. <laughs> so don't get your hopes up here. Oh boy, you've re you've really elevated our expectations. <laughs> uh oh. Uh, okay. Um, West Cemetery signage and restoration overview. Ben, can you yeah. uh, lead us through this, please? Yeah, certainly. So, um, West Cemetery, uh, as Many of you know, if not all of you, West Cemetery is um, the oldest cemetery in Amherst. It's located in the center of town. Um, it's behind One East Pleasant, the, the big mixed East building and kind of straddled by Triangle Street. Um, there are, there's kind of been a, um, a lot of, uh, there was a 1999 preservation plan written for West Cemetery that kind of outlined a lot of different work. I think it's, I've seen pictures from the 80s and 90s and it was very, very kind of sketchy place to be with a lot of overgrowth and graffiti. And um, it's funny, I grew, I grew up in Amherst and I, I, I did walk through there, but that was maybe in the early 2000s and I guess it was mostly cleaned up by then. But anyway, West Cemetery is um, transforming into quite a nice, place um and the mural 
uh, has been relocated. It used to be on the carriage shops, which were taken down. And now there's a beautiful Amherst history mural um, on the backside of one East Pleasant Street. Um, and I think, so there's kind of like, it brings us kind of to, to today where um, there's kind of the process is continuing essentially. And um, I know at this point, there's kind of three, kind of three aspects we want to address this summer in West Cemetery. And this is um, kind of picks up on uh, previous work that had been done. So um, as some of you know, we have $100,000 in CPA money um, allocated to the town. And that's, you know, specifically for the restoration of headstones in West Cemetery. Um, I believe there was work done in like the early 2000s, like 2003. There was work done in 2000. Here, this is the uh, report from the conservator. There was work done in 2018. And then, you know, in 2018 and 2019, we applied for CPA money, $50,000 each year. And now we have $100,000. So um, I'm kind of under a directive from you know, the, the higher ups to, you know, let's, let's take it on this summer. Let's, let's, let's spend that money and, and, you know, really make an impact on West Cemetery. So, um, the headstone restoration work, uh, there's kind of, it's a little bit, I need to, basically, I need to sit down with this report and like really study it to, to understand kind of where we are and where we need to go and how we get there. Um, there's a, obviously a lot of headstones in West Cemetery and they're in varying conditions. Um, this is kind of like, this is like the, <laughs> and there's like, I feel like I'm a code breaker. I have to try to understand what this, um, what, what they left us in 2018. Um, it's a kind of the colors indicate the condition of every headstone. Um, and I think the ones with numbers on them are the ones that they restored in 2018. So I feel like I kind of need to go through and look, look at the ones that are colored uh, because there's something wrong with them, but don't have a number next to them. Um, and that indicates that's a headstone that, you know, is either, you know, hazardous, high, uh, fractured or tilted that needs, to, that needs work. Um, there's also the issue where like, uh, you know, there's a big difference between, um, here, I'll just show some pictures as examples. Um, there's a big difference between a headstone that just needs to be reset, you know, in and is in generally good shape. And then a headstone that is, you know, needs to be fully repaired, you know, and in, in terms of cost, like uh, there's, if, if most of the headstones remaining are this <laughs> and need to be completely recreated, then $100,000 isn't gonna go as far. But if, if I walk around and see that it's mostly just, they need a new base and just to be reset, then you know, $100,000 can go pretty far. Um, so um, my understanding is when the, uh, basically my, my next task is to put together an RFP for this work to find a qualified contractor to do this work. Um, when this was put out to bid in 2017, I guess, um, basically the bid was written as if like, we have $50,000 how many headstones can you do for that much money? And, and then it was on the town to kind of pick the most, whoever, whichever contractor said they could do the most headstones and also had the, was the most qualified um, based on their, you know, references and, you know, certifications and stuff like that. So um, I kind of need to like ponder that and think if that's the best approach or, or whether it makes sense to kind of, really invent thoroughly inventory the cemetery and kind of spe specifically say like which ones need to be addressed um 
I would also say, let me see if I can find a map here. Um, sorry. So this is just for your reference, like Triangle Street is over here to the left. Um, the Dickinson plot is kind of in the middle over here. Uh, and then it, this really only shows half the half the uh, cemetery. Um, the uh, there's you know certainly a push. Um, the this is the eighteen. I think this is called the eighteen seventies section. I think that's just generally the year of most of the headstones. Um, I wish I could find a map of all of West Cemetery. Let me here. I'll just pull that up. Um, I just want to talk quickly about the different sections and kind of um, so here we go. So the um, the oldest section in the cemetery like dates back to I think like mid 1700s and that's mostly in this area kind of like in the middle of this ring and Honestly, that kind of, uh, yeah we're still seeing the map. Oh, gotcha. Huh? There we go. I mean, uh, the, the plot plan. Yeah. Is that, do you see the Google Maps now? Yes. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Great. Yeah. <laughs> thanks. Um, so the oldest section of the cemetery is uh, in this area here. That, that was restored in 2005, I believe. It was part of that work. Um, and that's in pretty good shape. Um, this is kind of the 1870s section over here and that was like you know half you know phase one of that project was done in 2018 so um the the idea is to kind of finish that work um however we are we're also you know the um we're also wanting to address it's called um there's a section back here it's called it's the african-american section which is where a lot of african-american residents in amherst were buried it's kind of along the fence here and in this area back here you can it's kind of shaded right now but um this area also needs to be addressed um there's some headstones in in rough shape and it's you know highly visible section and it honestly, it, it, it uh, connects really well with the Civil War tablets because a lot of the um, soldiers from the 54th Regiment and other uh, African-American regiments are buried here. So there's kind of that direct connection. Um, and so we are wanting to basically, you know, finish up the work in kind of phase two of the 1870 section, but then also stretch that $100,000 as far as it can go to also do work in the African-American section. I, however, I don't believe there's kind of like an inventory or like assessment of that section because I think the, the scope of work initially kind of focused on the 1870 section. So um, that's just to say basically uh, in our like RFP, I guess, um, part of the work would be to kind of just, you know, spend maybe, you know, kind of just split your time, split the contractor's time between here and the remaining work to be done in the 1870 section or, or um, essentially. So um, basically I, I, what I'm going to try to do is maybe have like a draft of the RFP ready for next meeting um and then but i you know i want to kind of give an, everyone an opportunity to kind of provide any feedback or suggestions kind of as i work to develop that um and i think i'll stop there the head the headstone restoration was kind of like part uh one of the pieces but then we also want to do some interpretive signage and address the landscaping but um, I can talk about that more later, so. Um, Jan. Uh, some of us were on the commission through that. Whole right, process. right. And um, first of all, let me just offer, if you wanna go out there and go through them one by one, I'll be happy to go with you. Yeah. You take notes. Um, 
also remember that some things have been damaged since 2018, <laughs> since that inventory, so that adds to it. But really the people that did the 2018 one, I mean, I realized there was nothing written in stone, but the agreement essentially was that it was a $150,000 project. Mm -hmm. And we told them that we could do 50 at a time over three years. And without actually signing a contract for three years, we gave them the impression that they would be the ones for those three years. I mean, I don't know how important it is to keep these vendors happy and whether they still believe it, but we did kind of base all the proposals to CPAC on that um, bit. Oh, well, that would make my life a lot easier. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you probably still have to go out with an RFP and yeah. get it all approved again, but I mean, that Jane, isn't that how you remember it? If yeah, that is how I remember it. The thing, yes, that what they told us basically was that, it, you know, the whole package that they were looking at was about 150,000. Um, but your, your point meant about the African-American section, I don't recall whether that was part mm -hmm. of, um, and it sounds like, from you, it sounds like it was not part of their um, yeah, but, estimating. I don't I believe it so. Was, but I yeah. do think that at some point somebody inventoried it because I remember at some point somebody talking about how many things in there needed work. Yeah. I don't think it was part of their survey, but someone did it. Even if it was a town, maybe it was Nate. I don't know. <laughs> Jonathan, you know? Yeah. Um, if so, I know there may be some procurement. Um, yeah. Restrictions. It. If we can go, I mean, and I don't think there are that many monument companies. I think this was one we'd worked with years before. Yeah. Um, so if it falls within procurement guidelines, it would be pretty great to be able to go back to them. And we were happy with their work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and this this is actually the same company, uh, MCC. They're they're the ones that uh, restored the Civil War tablets. Um, and they I did don't... 2005 work, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they, I'm sure they'd be willing to come out and update their map, but you know, we had them do the most crucial things first. Um, mm -hmm. They were the reddest boxes. That yeah. We had them do so they'll be able to do more with fifty thousand after this because they they aren't as damaged. Right, they right. Weren't treated, mostly. It's yeah, that's really yeah, helpful. Right. Um, we have, uh, yeah, sorry. Um, other thoughts from other commission members? I, I have a question. Um, I don't know if within the scope of the RFP there could be um, some kind of educational program that would talk about the design of um, gravestones in New England or in Amherst, um, the, the sculptural techniques that are used to create this kind of um, amazing American phenomenon um, in terms of material culture. Um, I just think as we do this work, as we kind of weave in the Civil War tablets, um, it, it's, it's a, it would be a missed opportunity, at least not to have a, a, an opportunity to talk to the conservators and um, maybe some kind of event or um, show and tell, or <laughs> I'm not mm -hmm. quite sure where I'm going with this, but I, I this cemetery is, is so important to the town um, and such a beautiful place to have in such a central location um, and so critical to the history of the community that I think, I think it would be. And given what you're saying, Ben, about the fact that you know, it's no accident that the shade, shaded area of the cemetery is where the African American mm -hmm. graves are located, and and is this not an opportunity to kind of is this isn't isn't this a teachable moment 
really, <laughs> to um, build on that and to, um, you know, make, make an attempt to say, here is a kind of equal treatment in terms of restoration or conservation of, of what we have here. Um, and isn't it great that it kind of dovetails with the Civil War tablets and Juneteenth and um, things like that. It's just really, really great. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'd be curious to know whether the same quality of materials was used for that section um, and the same quality of work. Um, but also, I think you're absolutely right, Hedy. Even if it were just an article in the newspaper where we talk about you know, what's being done and what's there and, and what kind of materials were used and where they came from and who the monument makers were, I, I think it'd be interesting for the town. Yeah, we should also remember um, Bob Romer's um, intense interest in this. Um, so he, he can be a, a resource, <clears throat> not so much for the restoration, but for the history of- He might be the one who made that inventory of the African-American. Uh, I, I've come across a number of articles uh, about in like there was a new plaque made for um, I think the person's name was James Thompson. He was like yes. a Civil War. Big, big dedication. And yeah, there's their big yeah. dedication. Mm -hmm. um, so I wonder if part of that event was, you know, learning, surveying the African American section more thoroughly, but yeah, possibly preceding that. Bob yeah. was yeah. interested in um, Af African American population in Amherst for a long for a long time, mm -hmm. and I think has a book of some. Yes, kind. he does, and articles. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can contact him too for more information if he did do mm -hmm. surveys. Right. Right. So. He, he would could be, that, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Pat. Go ahead. Could that <laughs> could that be a, a project um, that's connected to what we're doing about the restoration and and CPAC money be requested to um, uh, document the history of that section related to the uh, uh, tablets? You know, just just to 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 make 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 it a whole. You mean hire someone to do it, or just to publish it somehow? Or well, someone someone has to research it, and someone has to um, document it, and then then it, it, once that's done, it really should be published. It should be a report. It should be something mm -hmm. um, to to round out. Uh, what we know about the cemetery. I think Robin, you had to. Yeah, I've been poring over the guidelines for <laughs> CPA funding. I think that that's one of those things that would that might fall under administrative funding. But you can do uh, you can do a survey for something that's connected to a proposal that's under consideration, I think, but I'm not sure if you can do one for something that's already been funded. Thank you. I, I wonder if, I mean, I haven't looked at the cemetery preservation plan in a, in a long time. I know, it, I know the person who did it and it, I know her work and she's really terrific, but um, I'm wondering what's in there. <laughs> like, I mean, <laughs> You go back and look at that and <laughs> yeah definitely be a good place to start yeah. <laughs> is it long can you forward it to us would it be an interesting read for the commission yeah yeah it's um i found it just today um i you know uh if i i think i just googled west cemetery amherst preservation plan and i found a pdf of it um Okay. I have a, I have the, I have the original on, on our like network drive, but it's like, you know, each section is a different PDF and I was trying to, oh, okay. had to combine it all, blah, blah, blah. But I, I found one online. Okay. Maybe just send us the link to that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, okay. Um, 
but this, I think this part of this conversation is also kind of merging into the next part, which is signage and interpretive signs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, right now there's ve very little to no signage at West Cemetery. Um, there's, and I think some of you probably also know about the history with that. Um, Nate's cued me in that I guess when the mural was put on one East Pleasant Street, there was some sort of promise made that the developers there would, um, they, they paid for the mural, um, but um, it, the signage plan just kind of fell apart. And I don't, I don't know if it was on them or the town or what, but um, there we was a plan for a long time, but nobody. Yeah, yeah, we there was a them to make the final decision, and they wanted us to make the final decision. Yeah, yeah, sort of petered it, out. Yeah, kind of, that's my understanding. It kind of petered out, but there was a lot of a lot of work done to develop signs <laughs> for West Cemetery, um, and so you know, specifically with the uh, with the Juneteenth holiday coming up, um, part of that event, you know, there's a lot of a lot going into the planning of that event, but there's kind of going to be a walking tour of Amherst um, sites downtown, and one of the stops is going to be on in West Cemetery. Um, and so we obviously we can't do the headstone restoration by then that's hopefully by the end of the summer at, at the earliest maybe but um, we do we do want to get better signs up there just to kind of you know welcome there's gonna probably the most people ever <laughs> in West Cemetery on, on June 19th um, so we want to make it look look nice and so I will say Al, Alan Snow has been out there. He's our tree warden and his, he has a landscape crew. He's, I haven't been there since he's done work there, but I've heard he did great work kind of cleaning up the landscaping, getting rid of the woody uh, weeds and shrubs. Um, so that was kind of phase one, which was just like, let's just make the vegetation tame, tame and under control. Um, second is the signage. And so, um, I've kind of been getting messages from uh, Dave Zomack and others to kind of let's just we by June 19th we can't like have a elaborate sign in a nice granite post and like it, it, just to get that would need to go out for bid and fabricated and this and that um, but that is the ultimate goal is to like get a really nice signage for West Cemetery with like, you know, set in like granite stone, something like that. Um, that's kind of, we, we want to have welcome signs kind of in the entrances on Triangle Street and West Pleasant Street. Um, and then also kind of like interpretive signage for the mural, for the African-American section, probably for the Dickinson section, um, different kind of places as you go throughout. So that's kind of like the long-term vision um, for Ju for like immediate. Uh, we want to, we, we have money in, uh, it's not CPA, it's like a West Cemetery uh, gift account. Um, we have money to spend uh, to just get temporary signs put in there for, for June 19th. Um, and so, and I, I have an estimate from, uh, a sign, Valley Sign Works. I think they can do like aluminum signs and, and we'll just put them on four by four wooden posts. Um, they can do that uh, for us for a fairly good price. Um, and what I was gonna bring up here was just the, uh, the design that was um, worked on uh, by um, the Historical Commission earlier and so yeah, we had welcome signs we also had a pretty clear plan for the one that interprets the mural um, you know i i haven't come across that yet i've i found i found a brochure kind of thing that kind of has like that's, that's old yeah because it it has pictures from the old mural um so this is I, a three-part long, narrow 
sign low down in front of them facing the mural yeah had had um silhouettes of all the forms and they were identified and jane even went through and and helped identify some of the stuff or pick out what was essential yeah, I, uh, I, think I, has. <laughs> I think i wrote up um yeah i no. what i did was to um edit and reduce the entries in that for sure Right, so, for the new sign and the new mural. Yeah, so we were pretty much ready to go. And then there was a stalemate um, between yeah. the, the people who own that building and us. And I can't remember what happened. But I, I, I think it was that the, um, the, the agreement was that, uh, you know, the, the owners wanted to have some, uh, they wanted to have some say about you know what it would be like because they were paying for it um but they i i think they just probably felt they didn't have the expertise to pursue it mm -hmm. and 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 we didn't have the the bandwidth to kind of take it take it wholly into um the purview of the town staff or the historical commission so ben you've come along at just exactly <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, I was joking with Nate. There's been a few of these projects that have, you yeah. know, for whatever reason, fallen through the cracks. The the funding is there, the the design is there, and but just I guess maybe with turnover in town staff, they've they, yeah. it's, it's it's petered out. And so I've, there's been a few things where I've like had to kind of be the closer <laughs> of sorts to kind of just get it over the finish line. Yeah, um, I think if you went back to them, the owners. Um, and said, we're ready to put up something temporary. Uh, you liked the design we had, are you willing to let us try it? And then later, if you wanna put up something more permanent that you're paying for, you could yeah. tell us the changes you would want. Yeah. Um, that way they can see it sort of as a trial and they can tell us what they don't like. And if they do like, it'll be easy for them to say, yeah, let's do it in better materials or whatever. Right, right. Um, you know, I kind of think they, they would just simply be relieved that we're doing that we're doing it. Yeah. I mean, if we could they might it. even say, sure, just send us the bill. It, exactly. I, I, to tell the truth, I kind of think that that. Yeah, that was the impression I had in those last couple of meetings. Yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. I'd be happy to help reconstruct it with you. Um, okay. You know, out of whatever notes you have, and I don't know if I can find anything anymore, but we did have it pretty well laid out. Yeah. So I think. Um, one thing that's you know recently come up is since since that whole process played out like we've also separately been working on this town like wayfinding system mm -hmm. um with like and i guess jen, jen, jen knows about that from drb meetings but uh um, we are, we're planning on putting welcome signs you know welcome to amher signs you know kind of like directional post signs that point out different things you know town center umass that kind of stuff um, and it's all designed within the same family of signs um, by by a uh, designer in, in northampton seth gregory um nate the, there's that the playground is going in in kendrick park there's going to be a, a new sign put in there across the street from west cemetery that's going to match the wayfinding system so and the writer's walk signs match the wayfinding. Signs. Yeah, and the writer's walk signs match that. So it should match the cemetery because it's all sort of part of this history of Amherst, you know. Yeah, yeah. So like I think it's okay for the West for the cemetery to be a little bit distinct, but I do think it should be part of the same family of signs. Um so where that kind of left me slash town staff was thinking you know, we have this sign designed, it's looks, it, there's like kind of a foam board one up there right now that's literally falling apart and you can't read it. But um, it, it I think, I believe it's this design. So the idea was to maybe just put this up, you know, have this fabricated in aluminum, uh, put on a four by four wooden post, put this up um, for the time being you know, maybe, maybe it's there for a year. I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully not that long, but in the meantime, that would give us time to work with Seth Gregory to, um, basically, I mean, all the text is good. This is exactly what we would want it to say. 
Um, I would just add a line about the African American section at the end. Yeah. Oh, definitely. That's a, that's a great idea. Yeah. It does say something about uh, theft or mutilation of any memorial object is a violation of state law. So it's pretty clear. We want Excellent. to, yeah, remove all <laughs> dog waste. Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think we would basically send this to Seth and just have him mock something up that kind of matches the rest of the wayfinding system. Um, we could do that with the mural silhouette too. Yeah. It's the same yeah. font and colors. Yeah. You know. uh, ben, is um, it different from uh, Mike Hankey's design? So th this is what Mike Hankey sent me, um, what we're seeing here. The whole, the whole thing from top to bottom. Yeah, top to bottom, yeah. Okay. Um, and yeah. Is so that, I would sorry. Go ahead. No, sorry. Um, I was just curious. The the design, if it's the with the the, the graphic at the top, it's almost like I mean, I'm thinking immediately of Portsmouth, New Hampshire, which has about five or six really important historic cemeteries. Um it, it was that the intention that there was this sort of template that was for West Cemetery and other places of significance in the downtown that would look the same as this sign? Like, am, am, is that just curious? Not at the time, we didn't have that kind of coordination, but now with wayfinding, we do want to do that. I mean, right. I, just read, I just read today that Atkins, that the, the, the rotary where Atkins Farm Market is, is called, has been referred to as the Atkins Farm Center or village, no, Atkins Village Center. Mm. On top of Pomeroy Village and South yeah. Amherst and Amherst and North Amherst, it's really interesting what's happening. You know, just to be thinking about the town in this way and and um, sort of divided up in in these chunks. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. No. The the here I'll, I'll share my screen quickly. Um, I just found the presentation I gave to um, town council in February. So this is the wayfind in the kind of welcome to Amherst sign that were that was approved and right now we're just kind of finalizing the locations um, and so the these would go kind of along in four four locations as you approach downtown um, and then I, I I think the goal too is you know we're we're redoing the Pomeroy Village Center we'd probably you know in, introduce a, a wayfinding sign there um, something like this you know, welcome, welcome to Amherst, you know, town center would be straight ahead, or we would say welcome to Pomeroy Village Center or something like that. Um, there's a, the a re, an eventual goal is too for like, parks and conservation areas to have similar signs kind of with this faded brown in the background. And you know, it might say Kendrick Park or Mill River or something like that. So this is kind of the family of signs that's coming together. Um, this is the directional post sign that'll go more, more, more for pedestrians as you're walking through the town to kind of point you to or to green space, you know, parking, cultural destinations, you know, West Cemetery, the library, things like that. Um, so I, I hope, you know, it's, it's the kind of thing where, you know, uh, this is an, also one of those projects that was funded like 10 years ago and kept falling through the cracks and um, is hopefully we have momentum to, to finally get it done. We have approvals that we need and the funding. So it's just getting over that last step. Um, but I think there pretty soon there's going to be quite this kind of brand for Amherst um, put out there. And I think it makes sense to, for each sign that we do, whether it's for a historical site, recreation area, to kind of, at, to, to, our, to the best ability, make it cohesive. Well, let's do it. I mean, let's do these West Cemeteries. Yeah. What we yeah. have to do is really sit down um, and, and just finalize the details and get stuff to. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, uh, one question about this is, um, would we, 
I think I, I think probably the historical commission can make a recommendation about the about the West Cemetery sign uh, and whether whether the sign design that Ben has shown us uh, whether that's a temporary sign or a permanent sign slightly different from the from the signage family but is a single sign or or perhaps two signs, one at each entrance, um, you know, do we recommend to go ahead with that particular design for the, for the, those welcome signs? And then for other signage in West Cemetery to fall within the, the you know, the, the signage family. It'll probably have to go to design review board if it's any different than what's up there. Yeah, right? no, that, I was going to say that. So the, you know, I think I think we, Seth probably could design a sign and we could have it fabricated by June 19th. But the issue is that, you know, uh, because that would then be the introduction of a permanent sign, it would need to go which before DRB and possibly the planning board for approval, um, which I think would just add, make it pretty tight in terms of timing. Um, so that's why I was thinking if it's a uh, temporary sign and something that's replacing what's already there. Um, I would have to check with uh, Rob more of the building commissioner, but I think we could forego DRB as long as it's um, temporary and it's already designed. So, right, right. Yeah, and I guess, yeah. I guess my, I guess my question, yeah, I know that temporary signage, you know, temporary signage doesn't have to go through all the the whole process, of, yeah. as I understand it. But I guess my question is, you know, we could do that existing design as a temporary sign. There's another question about, do we want that design as the permanent sign that follows the temporary sign? That I maybe say we want to modify it to cross the bridge right now, but. Yeah, I think we want to match the wayfinding as much as possible, even if it's only a slight modification of this in terms of font and colors. Um, I think the, the fewer design differential differences we have across town, the more cohesive and less cluttered it looks. Mm -hmm. And so then we'll have time they, to go through those approvals. Um, is there an issue with the designer? Seth? The designer of this sign. Oh, Mike? I don't know. I don't think he cares. I mean, I changed yeah. the writer's walk signs and he had designed those and he never said anything. He knew we were doing it. Right, yeah. Um, yeah, I wouldn't, I think there, there was an email exchange I had with Michael and he was, um, I think just a little, I, I did ask like, could, is there a way that we could like a, adapt this sign into the wayfinding system to match the wayfinding system? And, you know, he, he was excited to help out with this process, but I think obviously I wasn't there during the time, but it sounded like it, you know, the way it was kind of like dragged down on and on after a while. Um, he was feeling a little frustrated with kind of like me then asking if we can then change the, the sign after, after all of that. So. So I guess my question is, do we, does, does the town own this design? Right. Well, he was a volunteer. He wasn't ever paid for it, right? So we didn't really buy it from him. It was one of his things as a historical commission member chair, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I think my understanding was he was working as a volunteer, not um, as a as a professional under contract. But I, I can check on that. So, I do think we, yeah, I think we would need his permission, or at least I would like to ask for <laughs> just to kind of just make sure we're not. So do the one he did as a temporary, and then when we go to do the permanent, let Seth 
do the least amount possible to make it match and then run it by Mike to make sure he's okay with it. It'll look a lot like what he already did. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So will we recommend that a, a, a text be added to recognize that the African-American cemetery is part of the West Cemetery? I would just add one line in there. Right. Yeah. I, I think that makes a lot of sense and it, and it doesn't change the original design, um, but it will allow us to, to have a temporary design until we get to a permanent one. Mm -hmm. The line could even say something like um, the southeast section of the cemetery has mostly burials of African-Americans, including the soldiers who are named on the Civil War tablets. Um, exhibited in town or something like that. Right, to make that connection. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Should we move that formally? Um, I, I, I don't think it's necessary. I think it's, well, all right, yeah. It, we, can, we can move it as a formal recommendation. To, to whom? Ben. <laughs> if it's to Ben, we don't need a motion. <laughs> well, to, 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 to help Ben have, have chutzpah to go forward and have this done, we want to add this line and get this thing up. And so if we move it and it's official, will that give him more, I don't know, authority to tell the town, look it, Historical Commission wants this, you better do it. So the Historical Commission reviewed the the draft, I guess this is considered a draft of the the documentation for West Cemetery and has um, suggested, recommended that the African American portion of the cemetery be recognized on this sign. Yeah. On the welcome signs that will be the temporary welcome signs. Right. Temporary design for the welcome. For the design for the temporary welcome. So is that a motion from? It, it's Pat. a motion. It's a motion from Pat. From I Pat. second it, Pat. Thank you, Hetty. Thank you, Hetty. Uh, any further discussion? Do you want a draft sentence, like I said, or do you want to just let them work it out? Um, I scribbled down uh, what you said. The Southeast section contains, you know, African-American residents, some of whom served in the Civil War and are listed on the tablets. I would probably say it nicer than that, but yeah. Yeah, and it's, I think there are people who served in later wars as well. Yeah. So yeah, actually, the yeah. American Armed Forces, including many listed on the Civil War tablets yeah. or something like that. And actually, I don't like the word contains. That's kind of weird. It should no, be like, I know. That no. They are. That Include, they are I had it, includes. Yeah. yeah it includes yeah. or are uh, laid to rest here or something. Yeah. Yes. I, I, like that. I like that laid to rest. Yeah. 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 All right. So let's have a let's have a vote on that motion. Uh, roll call vote. Uh, all in favor. Can a, oh, can we? I'm sorry. Can we get a just a? I've got the historical commission recommend, recommends that the draft signage for the West Cemetery add information on the African American portion of the separate to the temporary welcome sign. Is that sufficient? <laughs> Uh, you don't you're kind of repetitive yeah i know <laughs> you can clean it up later just put in okay. stage one so i've got the gist yeah, yeah, yeah I, the I agree okay. you can clean it up later yeah okay that's fine uh pat all uh in favor uh robin forum in favor janet markwart yes hetty startup yes Jane Wald, yes. Uh, unanimous vote in favor, thank you. Um, ben, do we need to return to the monument question? Or do you have enough feedback from us? Do we need to give you more? For the headstones? For the headstones, yeah. Um, no, I think uh, it's still pretty early in the stages. Um, I need to kind of like collect like all of the 
work that's been done, the, the various reports um, and, and surveys, and then talk to kind of uh, the accounting department in Amherst about like how, how to craft an RFP when it's not exactly clear kind of yeah. what we're asking people <laughs> like the, the contractor to do because um, we have $100,000, we have headstones to restore, but yeah. we don't we don't know exactly how much each one's going to cost and you know i think there's the way the way it was done last time was we hired a comp we hired the company that was the most qualified and said they could do the lowest price per headstone generally yeah. um but then left it up to them to kind of like develop a strategy for each one so i um, think you're hiring them to come back reassess where it is now and continue the work right it's right. not really amorphous it's pretty straightforward if you put it that way yeah yeah exactly so. all right and so members of the historical commission can further assist this by um reviewing the cemetery preservation plan are there other steps that we need to take um well i think our next topic is we're going to talk about the mixed use building at, at East Pleasant Street um, and uh, part of that I, I'm, I'm going to propose that we do a site visit for, for that um, which will be in West Cemetery so um, there may be maybe we can do an extended site visit if folks want to kind of walk through it together just so we're all on the same page. Um, yeah somewhere in your files there's a really big version of that map I ha yeah, yeah, yeah I, I found that. Yeah. yeah, if you could bring that and we yeah. could walk around with it, I yeah. think we could quickly identify which things are still damaged, the things that weren't oh, were okay before that are now damaged, and that kind of thing, and just have a pen, like maybe make a copy or have a pencil or an overlay mm -hmm. that we can mark on it. Right, right. Yeah. Well, with that in mind, why don't we flip these two next agenda items and go to um, go to the East Pleasant Street review, uh, East Pleasant Street item, and then do the Emily Dickinson Museum item. Okay, yeah, that, that sounds good. Okay. Um, so yeah, we'll switch four and five. Um, so yeah, um, basically a brief little introduction. Um, the same developers <laughs> as one East Pleasant, uh, Archipelago Investments, uh, is proposing a new mixed use building uh, next door to One East Pleasant. Um, and let me, I'll try to pull up the, oops, sorry. Um, the, uh, the new building um, will kind of, it's going into what's now a parking lot, but then also uh, the buildings will be demolished um, where Cousins Market and uh, the pub and I'm blanking what else was back there. Um, but I do believe just, just uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but that was all those demolitions were approved by the commission um, in previous years. So, and I think uh, Rob and others double kind of checked in on that to make sure everything was square with the demolition permits. Um, so the kind of purview of the historical commission, basically the, when a, site plan review is submitted to the planning board they then do a transmittal to all of the you know fire department you know health department you know different commissions uh to basically collect uh feedback and comments on the on the plan you know conservation commission things like that um so the historical commission is one of those and so um we you know are offered the opportunity to provide comments and feedback on the proposal. Um, I was a little bit premature, I do admit. Um, I, my, I was under the impression that we had to get this memo to the planning board by the time they opened the public hearing. Um, but I've since kind of been told by others that, uh, you know, by the others in the planning department, Chris Prestrup, that um, it, it really needs to be submitted during the public hearing. And it's probably going to be continued for at least, you know, three, four different hearings. Um, so um, 
what uh what I was gonna propose is we can talk about it now, just kind of talk about generally kind of what we might want to think about. But what I'd like to do for our next meeting is gather more information about the specific impacts, you know, focusing on West Cemetery because this building does back up to West Cemetery. Um, and you know, hopefully invite the um, applicant to discuss the project next meeting. Um, and uh, I think we should probably get Alan Snow to provide some information about the trees and the fence um, in West Cemetery. And you know, it's a big construction project, a five-story building. It's right up to the property line. So um, you know, they've they've told us that there's going to be minimal impact to West Cemetery, but I think getting more clarification about that um, would be important and. Um, so I, I just want to, I'm sorry, I'm going through the. Ben, I'm confused because in your first thing, when you sent it to us, I thought all we were commenting on was the use of that parking lot for the construction trailers and stuff. We're actually looking at the building itself. Um, so, w you know, we're not get the historical commission isn't given like a set, you know, scope that they're, that are, they're allowed to comment on. I think it's. Oh, okay. Um, kind of general concerns or, you know, um, and things like that. Uh, so I think, um, you know, I'm just, and I think, you know, I was under the, I was under the assumption that West Cemetery would be the primary kind of focus of the historical commission, but maybe there's other things to, to consider. Um, and so, sorry, I'm just going through it here. The, uh, the survey, you know, it shows the fence here and then the property line really is right up to the fence. You know, that's probably like a few feet or, you know, a foot or two. Um, and so some of these trees are kind of straddling the fence or, um, but most of them are on, uh, Actually, yeah, most of them are on town property. So I think what Alan Snow is going to say is that, yes, these are on town property, but there's a huge construction project ha happening right here. And it's likely that these trees wouldn't, you know, make it during the construction. And so um, we have, I think, it's, we should think about what does that mean for West Cemetery and do we have any. Um, Kind of like recommendations the the planning board you know the during the site plan review process the the use is allowed by right so they're allowed to build a mixed use building here um it can be five stories tall um there's a but the site plan review process does enable the planning board to make a lot of you know uh conditions about on the um, development about, you know, traffic control, landscaping, um, lighting, things like that, you know, trash management, stuff like that. So um, I think this is an area that's um, kind of interesting, kind of thinking about what this edge will look like when it's all said and done. Um, and so, yeah, I just think, um, you know, Another thing too is like, th this is where the pub is. The pub will be taken down. Um, they're gonna be able to access the construction site from this area. So it's not like they're gonna need to come through West Cemetery, which would obviously be terrible, <laughs> really, really impactful to the cemetery, but they should be able to do what they need to do from here. I mean, I, I don't know how they'll access this side of the site. That's maybe a question to ask. Um, because one East Pleasant really does come up right here. So, um, yeah, so um, I think I, you know, I personally haven't been part of like a, this is a new kind of thing for me, a historical commission review of a uh, new development downtown. So I, I just kind of had assumptions that West Cemetery would be the focus, but if there's other things that historical is, commented on on the past. Um, certainly, I'm open to kind of anything. So 
Yeah, Ben, this doesn't come before the Historical Commission very often. So right. This is kind of unusual for us also. And yeah, it's usually taken care of by going to the DRB and then our rep is on the DRB. We don't usually- Oh, interesting, okay. Yeah, yeah but I, um, I do think that it's right that the Historical Commission would be able to comment on impacts on West Cemetery. Mm-hmm from this yeah yeah so like with with one east pleasant i'm just curious how the because obviously there was a lot of considerations for west cemetery there was that negotiated um kind of by the planning board or what did the applicant come to the historical commission specifically well it was because of the mural if it hadn't been right. for the mural i don't think we would have been as involved that right lighting and setback and and the design that allowed for that mural to be replaced, that was all, you know, circled around that one thing. Mm -hmm. Right. We didn't, we didn't respond to plans for where it sat on the lot or what the design looked like or anything like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, sorry, you may have already said this, but um, are there setback issues with this project? set back from West Cemetery? Um, no, I mean, they're in compliance with the, with the zoning bylaw. Um, if you zoom in on that map you did, I'm looking at it from your you know, survey. From think. Yeah, if you zoom in on that, you can see that the pavement edge, oh, that's existing pavement edge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So they might actually take some of those trees out. I don't know what that black line is. I assume that's their new pavement edge, or is that just what their property encompasses? I mean, they may not actually touch some of those trees if they're not literally building right on there. It looks like it might be a property line. Yeah, the, the dark black mm -hmm. line is property line. Mm -hmm. And even if they don't touch them, just constructing right there, they're going to be hurt. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So is there a mechanism to have them replace whatever trees are damaged? Yeah, yeah, there is. So I think that's kind of what I had in mind was like a historical commission, like recommendation or something that, you know, any impacts to West Cemetery are, you know, uh, uh, addressed or you know certainly rem remedy yeah remedy yeah. yeah and would they would they plant on their side of our metal fence or our side of our metal fence um i don't i don't i'm not sure i mean certainly it'd probably be a discussion for alan snow it'd probably be easier for him to maintain them if they're on the town side the cemetery side of the fence yeah, it just it it allows them to kind of encroach a little further because it starts looking like their property line just extends yeah. much more you know yeah um and also if they're going to function sort of as a screen against this modern intrusion into the view of the west cemetery we want them close and dense mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and um, I think, I guess I'm not clear on the maturity of these trees. Yeah, they're like medium size. They're uh, maples. You can see the aerial. You yeah. Can see aerial and zoom Oh, in. yeah, right, right. That's right. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So, so, Ben, we, ca we can't comment on, or we don't have a a place, to, a role to play in terms of the visual appearance of the back of the building, looking at it from the cemetery? Um, unfortunately not. I mean, other, other than screening, you know, and any sort of like impacts to the, you know, if you want to think about, you know, it's, West Cemetery is a historical landscape, certainly. Um, There's no view shed or ancient lights or anything like that. Am I, am I, I'm just looking for things because yeah. <laughs> this, this, this just, I, this just upsets me. Yeah. yeah um, I think, um, sorry, I'm trying to find the rendering. Where is it? Here it is. Well, they're doing lights on the back of the other building to light the cemetery where the 
where the mural is, um, maybe they'd be willing to put lights on the back of this building to help light the cemetery. Yeah, I, I was actually going to say, um, in talking with Dave Zomack recently, the technically the cemetery is supposed to be closed at, at dark. That's what it says on the mm -hmm. um, signs. They used to lock it. Yeah, and that's kind of the, I think the, that was a, something that we years ago worked out with the police, I guess, was that it's just easier to just say that it's going to be closed after dark with, you know, I guess the trouble they've had there in the past. So actually, I think there's a move now to, there's very few lights in West Cemetery, but um, there's a move now to just not have, yeah. <laughs> have, have it very lit because we don't want to make people well, I know they aren't locking it because there's just nobody to go do it unless the yeah. town hall goes over. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um I think historical commission can comment on lighting plans. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So. And and that sign that's going to be erected for the mural, I mean that's the same people. This can all be kind of <laughs> yeah. Okay, the same discussion. Yeah. yeah thinking about the tree, this may be slightly out of our purview, but thinking about the trees um, and wondering what the what the pavement cover is going to be uh, with the new construction. The trees may be healthier within the within West Cemetery, within the metal fence, mm -hmm. um, depending on where grave markers are grave sites are yeah that's a that's a site visit i think that's probably a site visit thing yeah if you look at the aerial view and you zoom in it almost looks like some of them are so big at the at their tops that they might have to cut them just to get the building in there you know the building's going to be so close to the property line mm -hmm. um, well it's called maximizing land use value Right, but look how big <laughs> the one at the bottom is. Yeah, over here. Really extending yeah. quite a ways in there. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I guess we could ask them, I don't know, these are town trees. You're not allowed to just cut these in half, you know? But I guess anything that extends over onto their property line, they have a right to cut off. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to, there's like, look, there's headstones that are right. Yeah, I, mean, I, I was walking, but I um, yeah. I have pictures on my phone. I wish I could right. quickly transfer them, but yeah, um, there it's there's headstones right up against the fence too. So yeah, that's right. I I thought they don't I, want to plant any trees any closer because they'll tear up the the yeah. bird. Yeah. So what should be uh, the historical commission's next steps? I um, it sounds like we'll need a site visit at some point um, and then uh, we will uh, be able to discuss and um, draw up our recommendations or our uh, concerns what would it be, ben? recommendations or report i think it would be like a memo with recommendations okay. kind of thing yeah like things for that for the town to keep in mind when they're negotiating with the developers yeah okay all right Okay. So this wow. site visit, we were going to do that and the sort of cemetery signage and everything all at once. When, when is that? Is, are you planning to put that up soon? That together? Yeah, I would, um, I would like to do that uh, in the next few weeks, certainly. I think um, I was under the assumption, I think I've written down our next meeting is May 19th. Um, oops. So uh do, do, do. Yeah. let's I, definitely do it end of april beginning of may then yeah um i don't know i guess i guess it, uh, we might be able to schedule it there's only six of us um does i know just generally early mornings works for people who are tied to the nine to five work schedule that includes me um as long as I don't forget. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll call or, you or, this time. Yeah. <laughs> Give me your number and I'll just call you. So, I'll just set myself an alarm. That's and, all. you know, I, I understand so obviously COVID is still a concern. So um, it's quite it will be outdoors. So, yeah, 
you know, it's it's more flexible. I would suggest that we do a Wednesday morning before the 19th. As long as we're done by nine, I have stuff on Wednesdays at nine. Yeah. Sure. The mornings is, is a great time, but I'm often busy in the, you know, uh, early morning. I'll just have to leave like I did before. That sounds fine. Um, I think Wednesday, Thursday, Friday are fine with me. Friday's not good for me, but I could do Thursday would be even better um, than Wednesday, but. Yeah, I was gonna offer like, um, I'm, I'm in, I don't mind coming to Amherst uh, on days that I'm working from home, but I, I work from the office in Amherst Town Hall on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, so Thursday would work better for you to have to. Yeah, have if to possible. Connect. But um, again, I don't, I don't mind driving in on a Wednesday, but. So Thursday, the 13th of May. Then, well, wait a minute, um, Pat. Are you? Do you have? I just have a preference for Wednesdays, but I yeah. could do a Thursday. Okay. okay. Yeah, um, a, a Thursday morning um, would be great. Uh, the thirteenth or the sixth of May, possibly. Yeah. I think that would work. Maybe the. Uh, I'm sorry. Our meeting is on the nineteenth. 19th. 19th. Yeah. So, I mean, what about the sixth? Pat, do you have a preference given that they're both Thursdays of one over the other? Not at this point. No, I, uh, I, I can ink it in. Okay. And, um, <laughs> and because it's outdoors, I definitely will show up. Okay. Do you want to do uh, the sixth and then the 13th as a rain date in case it's boring? Mm -hmm. Sure. Good. And like it talking about eight o'clock or so is that what you're saying works for me yep. yeah all right eight o'clock on this on the sixth yeah <laughs> and okay. where are we going to meet the entrance by behind xana's there that entrance or what yeah yeah that sounds good um so like you would walk past one east pleasant through that alleyway yeah it's right behind. It's right behind um, the sushi place, right? I, yeah, I, I uh, and the yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Okay, we can actually park in that lot behind. Yeah, exactly. Or in Santa's. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So email me your uh, phone number, Robin, and I'll call you. I got it. <laughs> it, a lot. it was on autopilot you know how it goes <laughs> and i think i will um i'll probably post that as a meeting because i think we're we're gonna want to be able to talk about yeah like, all, a lot <laughs> whether it's about the east pleasant street building or the i don't think we're gonna just like sit there like asking rhetorical questions. <laughs> yeah, and we'll, we'll look at the headstones, we'll look at yeah. the signage. It, allow time, everybody, if you yeah. have it, uh, and try to bring that map from the conservators. Yeah. Okay, eight o'clock, May 6th. Yeah. Rain date of the 13th, that's great. Um, all right, so let's move on to the next item, which is Emily Dickinson Museum restoration project and I, I uh, step down as chair at this moment and ask Jan to, um, to assume the chair. Okay, I haven't seen a, an agenda, but I know that's the item. So let's just move on to um, a presentation of work that's being planned for the Dickinson Museum. And I invite Jane Wall to make the presentation. Thank you very much. There's a, um, uh, Ben sent you a link to uh, a very fulsome set of documents, a perhaps overwhelming set of documents. <laughs> so um, I am going to take a slightly different approach and uh, for, a, for a brief presentation and uh, convey to you more of the spirit of, of this project, but I'm very, very glad to, um, to, to uh, respond to questions about the more technical packet. 
So uh, I guess first to begin with, um, the, this is a sort of a, explaining a little bit of the process. The uh, Emily Dickinson Museum uh, is proposing this project and is at this point going through a round of um, a, uh, permitting and approvals. Um, our, our process must be that that we have to present this project to the local historic district commission for their review of what happens on the site and what happens in the public way. So there's some uh, mechanical system things that are gonna happen on the site and the really the only historic restoration piece of this project that is in the public view is um, reinstatement of the 19th century front door. Uh, we have just earlier this week uh, had a hearing with the local access advisory board um, because of the scale of this project. It's you know more than 30% of the value of the building. Uh, so that means that we have to take this before the local access advisory board and the Massachusetts architectural advisory board. So these two, um, these two boards are kind of loosely connected in, in their level within the approval system. Um, the local access advisory board um, approved the project with some recommendations about how we could improve uh, interpretive uh, accessible interpretive tools. At the same time, we need to uh, take this project to the Massachusetts Historical Commission because the Emily Dickinson Museum, uh, the, the Historical Commission holds a preservation deed restriction on the Emily Dickinson homestead, the evergreens and both landscapes. Um, we are not yet at the point of submitting any building permit, which would trigger a, um, a potentially trigger a, a demolition uh, application. And to tell the truth, I don't know for sure that this project will trigger that application because, you know, the, the thing that's happening on the, on the facade is actually a restoration rather than a demolition. So, I guess that remains to be seen, but um, uh, but I wanted you know I, I certainly wanted uh, colleagues on the historical commission to know uh, as soon as I could bring this project to you uh, what's going to happen. Um, so let's see other um, other processes are uh, site plan review. So we're we've submitted our. Uh, documentation for that site plan review. Um, the the uh, presentation or the documentation for uh, review and approval by the Massachusetts Architectural Advisory Board um, involves uh, a uh, documentation of consultation with the local access advisory board and consultation with the local historic historical commission. So that's, so this is the kind of the formal point of that. Um, going to the Massachusetts Architectural Advisory Board is really a request for uh, regulatory variances. So one of, one of those is a variance, uh, request for a variance on the requirement to have an elevator. And um, in our view, an elevator would, um, th there is no, in our, in our ultimate restoration plan, there's just simply no space for an elevator within the building. Um, and it would be absolutely contrary to our preservation and restoration efforts to um, add an exterior elevator column. Uh, and then uh, the, there's a second 
uh, variance request um, having to do, so the elevator is to uh, make access to the second floor available to visitors. Uh, the second variance request has to do with um, door openings. Um, and we, we believe that the door openings are in most cases wide enough for wheelchair use and that there are um, sufficient uh, routes into the main part of the house that are wide enough so that we're requesting a variance for that. Um, so at this point, I'm going to, um, if I can share screen, and I can, uh -huh. I'm just going to uh, sort of take you quickly through what the proposed scope of work is and uh, and some of the sort of cool things that we've um, come upon during our um, during our uh, examination or our uh, research into what this restoration could be. Um, okay, so there we go. So the proposed scope of work is that we're going to restore uh, the north and south parlors, and you can see right here, they, uh, this is, these two parlors are adjacent to each other. They run the depth of the main block of the house. Uh, and I'm going to try to back up, mm -hmm. get back to this. <coughs> hallways on the first and second floor. So these are the, the large um, main hallways that are, you know, very uh, generous hallways um, that lead into um, stair, uh, staircase openings. Uh, there's a room at the top of the stairs, uh, the stairs that go from the first floor to the second floor. There's a room at the top of the stairs that is unrestored. It has at times uh, served as a, an exhibit space and other times as an office, but that is to be restored uh, to, to uh, represent uh, the room occupied by Emily Dickinson's mother during the last 10 years of her life when she was an invalid. The stairs from the second floor to the third floor are a 20th century innovation. So we are um, intending to remove those stairs and to, and to reinstate a staircase that historically in the 19th century rose from the second floor to the third floor. In those days in the 19th century, the third floor was actually all attic. Uh, and then finally, um, replacing the, the um, heating, ventilation, and cooling system for the main part of the house. Um, at this point, there are only three spaces in that entire main block that are served by air conditioning. Um, and our goal is to have a system that is uh, sophisticated enough to, uh, and extensive enough to maintain temperature and humidity control throughout uh, throughout the house where, where our, our, more of our sensitive collections are going to be displayed. So um, just this, uh, this is just to highlight in yellow the, um, the main areas of that main block. So the main block is the original 1813 section, um, just a square area that this area and the rear addition are um, later additions. Um, so these are the spaces intended for restoration on the first floor. And then on the second floor, it's this space along with the stair hall. Uh, at this point, the library here on the first floor that's already been restored. On the second floor, this room, which is Emily Dickinson's room, uh, that's also been restored. So our goal is to basically restore the entire original 1813 block. Um, so some of the fun things we've run across are um, the um, original door, uh, the 19th century door, uh, which the, the uh, which was removed uh, and that entrance uh, kind of 
revised in the 20th century by the family that lived there. But this door, the, the 19th century door, mid 19th century door, um, was stored, was removed and stored in the, in the loft of the garage behind the homestead. So we've got that door um, and want to sort of re um, return this whole front entrance to what it looked like during Emily Dickinson's writing years. Um, this is the door. Um, and if I go, so this, I don't know, I like fun little details like this, where you see this, you see this little white rectangle here? Mm -hmm. That was a nameplate. Uh -huh. You can see here. And so the nameplate has been removed and there are certain kind of oral historical <laughs> suggestions that that nameplate exists somewhere. But this is one of the things that, you know, it was most readily uh, identifiable um, that, uh, you know, told us this was the, the 19th century door. Um, so here it is. This is a cool kind of East Lake period uh, mm -hmm. lock plate. Here closer up is the uh, location of that nameplate that I mentioned. Below all this alligator finish is this really quite nice walnut door. Um, so that can be, that can be restored. Um, the door has a little remnant of etched glass. So we're going to try to have that recreated. Um, this is a photo, this is a photo of um, wallpaper that was hidden above the level of the ceiling in the second floor hall. And so we've got, you know, several different generations of wallpaper. This one is kind of an arts and crafty period. This one, uh, identified by the blue arrow, is um, more of the period of 1855 when Emily Dickinson's father renovated the whole house. Um, and so that, that this paper can be recreated hmm. uh, and we're intending to use that in the hallways on the first and second floor. Uh, there you get, a, this is a little bit uh, clearer view of more of the pattern of the paper. Uh, and there's a designer's uh, first crack at a, a graphic design of that wallpaper. Since this, since this was done, we've, we've had a, a, a fragment of that wallpaper analyzed and have come to understand that what you see here is this kind of green color. This, it, uh, this is, that was oxidized on the fragment. So this is really a powdered bronze. Um, so that was, all that material science is kind of fun. Mm -hmm. um, there is, uh, in the evergreens, there was this um, floor cloth remnant uh, we found a modern, uh, not a modern one, but a, a better preserved remnant of a floor cloth of exactly the same pattern at the collections of historic New England. But then we found uh, this floor cloth remnant in a closet on the second floor of the Evergreens and found uh, again, a, a fragment in another collection that's very close to it, but it's we've decided that this is really a kind of a significant original document for floor coverings. So we are going to reproduce this to put in the front hall of the homestead. Uh, let's see, there's, um, this is sort of digging around at the point of the staircase on the first floor. Uh, and this was to try to determine what what these um, stair treads and risers were like in, in the 19th century. And the, the outcome is that that staircase is essentially the 19th century staircase with a couple of additions like these uh, little decorative pieces. Um, and you can see here, taking off that decorative piece, this is the original graining. Um, so we're gonna reproduce the graining to kind of match the whole 
second half of the 19th century um, darker wood mahogany walnut look. Uh, I mentioned that we found that front door in the in the loft of the garage, but we also found the original balusters from the staircase. So we've got about 75% of the original balusters so we can recreate the staircase as it was in the in the 19th century. And this is all this that's all pretty nice walnut mm -hmm. wood also. Um, so more doors, they're just a lot of doors up there in the garage loft. And that's, that's where that front door was and the balusters and some fireplace mantles um, that we can also restore and reuse. Uh, so just to give you an idea, this is what the front hall of the Evergreens looks like, uh, uh, sorry, of the homestead looks like right now. And this is a rendering of uh, kind of what the vision of it will be uh, since this artistic rendering, we've, we've switched out what the floor cloth is, is supposed to be. This was that, based on that first fragment from the evergreens, but now it's going to be a whole lot busier and, uh, and probably a little bit uh, jarring to our 21st century sensibilities. Um, the homestead parlors, there's a whole, there, there's actually much somewhat less physical evidence, but there's some descriptive uh, sort of historical descriptions of what it was uh, in sort of vague terms. The parlor, dark and cold and stiffish. The wallpaper was white with these big figures and a Brussels carpet. Um, so uh, the wallpaper is, uh, this one is found in a House Museum in Maine from a, the period that we uh, are aiming for. Uh, and the carpet will be similar to this, but not quite this. Um, we have found a, an 1840s carpet that, um, here it is, 1840s carpet that it meets the description of the basket of flowers. So that's is that, the Jane, is that upside down? This. The one on the right. The one on the right? Uh, no. Okay. Just just checking. No, the basket is right side up, but it, okay. does, have this, it does have this little... Uh, it's an upside down finial. What the it's heck? an upside down finial. Yeah. The yeah. Heck? But I don't know, you know, depending on which end of the room you go into, it's you know, right side up or it can be upside down. Uh, this carpet is now being manufactured. The drop finial is actually is what it's called. Just remembering. Oh my god, what fun! Sorry, I shouldn't have interrupted. No, no, that's that's fine. That's <laughs> fine. Yeah. Um, okay, so here's a here's what the homestead parlors look like right now, and here's a, a preliminary idea of what they will look like once restored. <laughs> Whoa! Wow. So the big difference, huh? Yeah. Uh, this, the on the right, you see the staircase to what is now the third floor, but when their time was the uh, the attic. This doorway on the left, right here, that is a doorway to a, a kind of a winder stair that will be reinstated. This, this staircase is coming out mm -hmm. and a staircase will go in here. What did you call that a blinder stair? A winder stair. Oh, so winder it, stair. it okay. goes in and then immediately turns up in a different okay. way. Yeah. So that's, this is more of a kind of impressionistic uh, description of what our work will be. Um, this doesn't really include the pieces about the, the uh, heating, ventilation, and cooling system, but that's, you know, that's a lot of work that will be tucked away and hidden, um, but it's a, it's an important part of the project also. Jane, what about the information that was in the packet about the floor, the original floors and the original 
uh, hearthstones. Is that going to be pursued? Yes, we're taking up, uh, so the, um, the f most of the flooring in the homestead uh, that, that you can see and walk on when you go in there uh, was uh, put in place in the first quarter, I think, of the 20th century. So we'll be taking up that strip flooring and revealing the 19th century floorboards. We've done that in two spaces already, in Dick, Emily Dickinson's room and in the, the Homestead Library. So we'll be taking that up, but we will be putting down um, new floor coverings. But the idea there is to, um, you know, even if you don't see those original 19th century floors, the 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 sensory experience of, you know, walking on those floors uh, will be valuable. And, and the hearthstones, know. so yeah, the hearthstones in the, in the parlors, um, we found that there, uh, that there's a layer of cement on top of the original hearthstones. So once the strip flooring comes off, so does that cement layer. So that gets back down to the original hearthstones. And the uh, mantles that you found in the garage, are those gonna replace the later ones that are there? Or? The, the mantles in the parlors are uh, mantles from 1855 when oh, okay. uh, Edward Dickinson did a lot of renovation. The mantles in the garage are, um, they're mostly kind of federal period mantles, they're wood mantles. Mm. And they were removed in the 20th century when the Park family kind of, they, um, they blocked up fireplaces on the second floor um, and removed the mantles. So we, we, there is one space, that, that one Northwest room uh, at the top of the stairs uh, will be putting a mantle back in place in that, in that space. With a faux fireplace, there won't be any chimney or anything. That, well, the chimney is still there. And that, to tell the truth, that particular chimney is important to the new HVAC system. So we're gonna, <laughs> we're actually gonna be rebuilding that. Mm -hmm. the, we'll be rebuilding the top part of that chimney on the, at the top of the house. But by that time, uh, the Dickinsons were using stove uh, heat on the second floor, so so the you know there were the the stove had a, a pipe that went into the flue and it'll be something more like that. Setting out from that mantle that you replace, yeah, mm -hmm. cast iron stove, yeah, right. nice. Mm -hmm. It's so exciting. I was just looking at it getting more and more excited. I love that you're going down to the original floor and everything. It's actually make the room higher. Yeah, that's right. And so the- <laughs> And the doors were cut off. So you have to replace those. Yeah. That's right. All those, yeah, we have to do a whole lot of Dutchman repairs to the doors. Uh, but interestingly, the, all that 20th century strip flooring um, was actually cut uh, around the baseboards and the door jams. So, you know, we take that strip flooring up and we get, you know, about this much more baseboard and uh, door jam. Oh, right. And so there actually will be more authentic depth of baseboard. They've always looked a little short. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Exciting. Yeah. yeah, one um, kind of subtle piece of all this work is that we, have to replace all the ceilings in that that part of the house because of a uh, the unfortunate event of about ten years ago when the ceiling in the south parlor just unzipped and fell into the room. Hmm. So, um, as that, that point, plaster? it was it was a very heavy early twentieth century plaster that had a lot of Portland cement in it. Oh. And over the years, all the, you know, the vibrations and all that, uh, and, and the fact that it was a bit underbuilt, um, had it, you know, it just failed. And at that point, to avoid that same 
misfortune in other spaces, we had to replace all the ceilings with temporary ceilings. And the Mass Historical Commission wants us to Put permanent plaster ceilings. So that's that's. So if you're just wallboard right now or something, and you have to put in more timely, appropriate. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow, <laughs> a lot of work ahead. Yeah. Exciting. So this is a museum and it closed for quite a while while this is going on. Yes, will be closed until at least until this time next year. Well, will be closed. I won't say at least. Will be closed until spring of next year. You hope. <laughs> it always takes longer, you know? <laughs> right. yeah. Jane, um, re remind me, because it's been a while since I took a tour of the homestead. Um, I, I, is there a window of time that the house is interpreted to, you know, and is this a, a, an attempt to come closer to that, to the sort of authentic decade or two of, of her writing um, life, um, you know, along with having her mom, you know, in a part of the house that is now going to be newly interpreted. Yes, thanks, Hetty. Yes, um, we're trying to interpret the house um, as it was during her adult writing years. So she was born in that house and lived there until she was about 10 years old. At that point, her father moved the family to a house right next to the cemetery where the Wrens Mobile is now. And then uh, about 15 years after that, when Emily Dickinson was 24 years old, he repurchased the homestead and did a massive renovation of the house, uh, moved his family back there and that you know, was where Dickinson lived uh, when she was a working poet. So, you know, we know of almost 1800 poems that she wrote and um, all the handful we think were written right there at the homestead. So we're wanting to interpret it from the period 1855 when she moved back there until her death in 1886. Great. That's great. Um, I once I once consulted on a Frank Lloyd Wright house that was looking to install HVAC in it. Um, so it was really complicated and where to put the stuff. <laughs> but also it was Alabama, so it was pretty critical to put the HVAC system in because there was absolutely no way that anyone would stand for half an hour, let alone an hour and a half, to be participate in a in a tour of the of the house and I know that one of the questions that was most concerning was the amount of vibration um, that these systems can have in historic structures you know wood especially um, and I'm sure that you're in very good hands when it comes to who you're working with but um, that's presumably why the chimney that you were just talking about is considered part of the HVAC system because it's that much more sturdy. Is, is, that, is that the case? Um, well, uh, it actually is going to serve as a, the, you know, as a flu for some of the, <coughs> you know, the evacuation of the excess hot air and steam from the system. Okay. Yeah. Um, a lot of the, so the mechanical parts of that system, the air handling units are, are for the most part going into the, into the cellar and into spaces on the third floor that are either already used as mechanical spaces or um, will be repurposed for mechanical spaces. So that in a future phase of restoration, um, those systems can be extended into the rear, into the rear L, into the rear addition. It's a very interesting project in terms of the, the sort of contrast between all of these quite ephemeral pieces of the project, you know, wallpaper and carpets. And I mean, they can be substantial, but they're, they're, 
they're decorative. And yet, of course, in this house, of any house, they're incredibly important and interesting. Um, and, and yet you're also doing this mechanical stuff, the HVAC system on the other end. And I'm just really curious about how you, I love the way you've talked about it tonight. It was a lot easier to listen to you describe it, having been in the house without having to read a lot of the materials that Ben so helpfully added to the documents page of the website for us. Um, I just think what an amazing opportunity this is to guide us all through this, this interpretation, because one thing I learned having been involved in a fair number of, of projects, not on this scale, is, is the kinds of um, things we can learn about the building, but also about the kinds of work that are done on buildings or, or the kinds of careers that you can have to interpret this. You know, you mentioned the material science of the, the oxidizing of the wallpaper and things like that. So um, even though you're closed, I'm hoping, because I've, I've really loved all of the things that the museum has been doing online since the pandemic, I'm hoping that that you embrace the the continuing online presence um, of the museum um, in terms of what's going on during the time that the project is in play, and that and that we almost won't feel that you're closed. I guess is what I'm saying, yeah. um, because I've felt that in the last year with the Emily Dickinson Museum. I think it, you've been an amazing presence. Um, in the online community, not just academically, but creatively and, and in so many ways. And, and I hope that, um, that that will be a, a part of how you're thinking. I don't know if that's, you know, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> it's just, you know, um, so exciting to hear about it, as Jan said. Uh, yeah, thanks so much for that, Hetty. We, um... You know, when the pandemic struck, we, um, we'd been thinking for a few years about, oh, well, we ought to get into remote programming. Mm -hmm. And now it's just one of those things you don't quite get to. And then we were forced to do it. And it has been a real boon. It's, it's just been uh, an incredible silver lining for us. Um, at the same time, this whole last year when we were closed, we, we had already done, uh, we were in the very, very early stages of a long range planning process. And we're, we were able to complete that long range plan, which takes us out 15 to 20 years. And one of the, and it, it, it's a really exciting plan, really, really visionary, but, um, one of the important pieces that is probably a little bit underrepresented in that plan, but is ever more important, is, um, is a kind of virtual or online or remote presence that, um, you know, we know at this point, there's, there's no turning back from that. Um, it's gotta be an important part of what we do uh, going forward. Um, so I think, you know, I, I hope we will be that, be there and be that presence that you, that you're, um, that has meant something to you in this past year. I agree uh, with Betty. It'd be nice if, um, besides the events that you host online and everything, if there were just sort of an ongoing blog about what's going on with the construction, mm -hmm. some of these images that you showed us and information about the wallpaper and everything. It'd be fun for the public to, it would also build interest for them to come back and see it when it's done, but it'd be nice for us, for us to follow. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just wanted to ask one quick thing and then we're getting late, so we should um, wrap this up. You're, you're going to have the, the carpets down permanently and people will be walking on them all year round. They, these aren't going to be like winter and summer because I know in summer they used to put down like matting instead. Mm -hmm. You're just mm -hmm. gonna have a carpet all the time. The yeah, I, th I think so it right now in uh, in a couple of spaces, um, both in the homestead and the evergreens, there is 
uh, matting on the uh, on the floorboards. At the Evergreens, it's the original matting. Mm. At Homestead, it's newer matting. Um, but I think it's going to be un. It, it's just going to be really logistically difficult for us to take up the carpets. Mm -hmm. So we'll put them down. We'll have um, druggets and you know other kinds of protect pathways to to protect the the carpets. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, can I, I just, uh, we don't necessarily have to discuss it now given the time, but I'm just curious about the decision making behind the request for a variance for the elevator and how that, um, I, I don't know if we want to move that the discussion to the next meeting, but um, well, I, can actually, I, I can imagine what a challenge it is. Uh, on both sides of the issue. And, and I'm just curious how the decision comes down one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the reason, the, a principal reason that we want the variance, and I should say that we have, we have had this, ver we have had this variance before. Um, in 2016, we requested both of these variances and we're granted these variances, but because this project is, the scale of the project exceeds 30% of the value of the building, you know, we have to go back and right, right. request them again. So uh, the rationale for this is that it is not possible to uh, put an elevator into the building without significantly damaging the the usability and the restoration goals of the of the building mm -hmm. and without significantly um, changing for example the roof line if we you know if we have to put a an elevator in we have to put a shaft in and mm -hmm. you can't and what, what about an exterior addition that is unacceptable because of the uh, the intrusion of that uh, and it, and the injury to the exterior integrity of the building. I mean, this mm -hmm. is you know federal style building, right? Um, windows everywhere. It's just not that big. If it were a bigger building, it'd be different. It's just such a small house to try and- Right, build. right. I'm just curious, yeah. Yeah, there's just no place for an exterior elevator shaft that would not significantly impair the integrity of what is a national historic landmark. Right, right. Okay, thank you. Can you talk to us about the landscape proposal at some point? What's that? Pardon? You said there was landscaping renovation and stuff too. You're going to tell us about that another time. I can I can tell you about that another time. I got you know a couple of slides on this PowerPoint, but I, we might be running short of time. But yeah. what the the goal of that project? Uh, let me just sort of finish up on the on the accessibility piece. Um, so it's incumbent on us to provide alternate methods of interpretation or uh, content delivery for visitors who can't ascend to the second floor. And that can happen in a variety of ways. One way is that we have a printed notebook. Another way is that we have an iPad uh, uh, presentation. Uh, a third way is that we uh, have um, museum assistants or, or guides who stay on the first floor level and part of their job there is to talk with visitors who can't go upstairs about what it is that they're, you know, what's up there, what, what can they not see. Um, I mentioned we just had a hearing with the local access advisory board. Um, to support this variance request, and they had a they had a, a number of really terrific suggestions for us about how to, you know, how to enhance that 
how to enhance accessibility for people with uh, various disabilities that, uh, you know, they might need um, tactile uh, exhibits, things that they can touch. Um, we've just gotten a grant to, um, to improve a virtual tour on our website. So that virtual tour would have, you know, the goal there is to have some audio, is to have it um, available by audio mm -hmm. and by alt text. Um, so that's to adapt great. what's already on the website or to create a new tour? To, uh, to create, it would essentially be a new tour. Our website is pretty uh, oriented toward kind of disparate educational materials or disparate essays, but this would be to bring um, information together in a way that actually takes you through an experience of the buildings. And so that's been a weakness of our website for some time. Mm -hmm. this, this will help that. So the landscape piece, um, the objective of that is to reinstate, there was a, pa a, a path between the homestead and the evergreens that is pretty well documented in photographs um, and was signifies the close relationship between the two houses, but also is identified by a, a quotation from Emily Dickinson herself, who said that it was a path just wide enough for two who love. And so that's just become a kind of a, a kind of an iconic statement. So that's a goal there. Uh, and that's paired with a, um, a plan to add architectural lighting to both the homestead and the evergreens to make them sort of pop more as an important uh, cultural site in Amherst. So uh, I've got some fun stuff to show about that and a, and a really uh, great story of conflict between the parks and Martha Dickinson and Bianchi, but we can save that for another time. Oh, this was very interesting, Jane. It's so exciting. I can't wait to see the finished result. Thank you, Pat. It's, it is pretty exciting. It's a little bit of a white knuckle ride at the moment, but... Um... I, I can Im imagine. You've got, a, <laughs> uh, you've got a lot of hurdles to cross. Yeah, yeah. So I have a formal request of you uh, as the Historical Commission, and that is um, if, if you could... Uh, if you could pen a, I don't know, a two sentence endorsement of this project for the Massachusetts Architectural Advisory Board, I would be very grateful. Um, and uh, I, I erred in not coming here prepared with those two sentences. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> oh, we can do them. Um, the Massachusetts Historical what board? Sorry. Advisory. Advisory board. Oh, I'm sorry. Mar Massachusetts architect. Is that what you said? Architectural. Architectural. Advisory, Advisory yeah. board. Okay. Yeah, you it's similar to the, uh, the North Amherst Library project, I think also requested a variance and um, they're, they're going through a similar process too as well. Um, well, you can't write that. Do you want me to write that? Super. And then I send it to Ben and he can put it on town letterhead from us. Yeah, yeah. And then give it to you or send it to the address that you give us for the board. I think send it straight to the address for the board. And I can, uh, Ben, you probably have that address, but I can give it to you also. Okay. And, and should it be copied to you, Jane, as the director? Yes. Yeah, for your, for your files and stuff, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Okay, and so then, um, let's see, I just, so I would sign it as um, vice chair, since you've recused yourself about this for the commission, mm -hmm. and then um, copy you and copy Ben for the town, right? Yes, right, right. Okay. And, okay. and on, on uh, behalf of the historical commission. Right, on behalf of the historical commission. And, and if you all want, I can come up with a couple sentences and run it by you before I finalize the letter. 
however legally you can do that, that's great. But Jan, I think you, you probably are the, you know, one of the people on this commission who are very able to do that. Well, I'll run it by Jane just to be sure she's happy with what we say. How's that? I don't want to say something that doesn't work for your purposes, but. Sure. Um, Jan, I can send you the, the language of the two articles that um, we are, for which we are requesting a variance that Okay. I'm, I'm not sure that was, that probably wasn't in the local historic district package. Okay. Yeah, so it goes and I'll write it up tomorrow so that it's fresh in my mind. Yeah, okay, thank you. Great. Thanks very much. Okay, thank I think you. we'll turn the meeting back over to Jane and <laughs> close our agenda. We probably have public comment though, so. Yes, so, um, so I, I might be looking at an older version of the agenda. So if you could, Ben or Robin. Yeah, what do we have? Um, remind me, do we have? Okay, yeah, so there is one more item. Um, and I'm, uh, yeah, I mean, basically I just wanted to um, extend an invitation to the Historical Commission to uh, view the Civil War tablets now that they've been moved to Bank Center um, mm -hmm. and are, you know, nicely displayed on these beautiful A-frames. Um, uh, and so, yeah, I think it's not super urgent, you know, given we have another site visit if we want to wait on it, but... Um, it's not just open to us anytime, right? Yeah, we would have to, um, yeah, we would have to just arrange for someone to open the room, um, which is very easy, but uh, it would, you know, just for the sake of, um, it would be nice to kind of all do it together. So I don't have to keep asking for the room to be opened. Um, and so um, I'm, I'm gonna skip ahead for a second. We, we do have a, a demolition uh, application that was submitted. Um, and I can talk more about that, but I think we're going to want to do a site visit for that. Uh, for and it will probably review it next meeting. I think yeah, we need to review it at the next meeting. Um, so all of a sudden, you know, uh, I'm like proposing three <laughs> three site visits for uh, before next meeting. So um, I uh, I yeah, if people are open to that, we can. I'm you know able to do that, but. The Civil War tablets um, seems to be the least urgent of the three. Although, I mean, some people have been waiting like 20 years to see the tablets. So um, there's also a lot of excitement around them. So uh, that's all basically. Um, Is there, um, just to throw this idea out there, uh, would, there, would anyone be interested in combining the West Cemetery site visit with a Civil War? Yeah, yeah. Tablet site visit? How late can you get to work, everybody? Because we could just go on that day. Works for me, but yes. I think some other people had issues at nine, I don't know. I, yeah, I, it's really hard for me. I, I sort of need to be around when the cook and the cleaner and every, you know, I just, it's just that kind of start the day off right thing at work. And, and it's, it was hard yeah. last time when I had to come to um, look at the building, the mm -hmm. Columbus thing. It, I just, I just felt like a real sense of divided loyalty. So that was yeah. well, what, what, what time of the day works best for you, Hetty, if any. Um, afternoon is good. Early evening, you know, um, now that the evenings are getting lighter, um, yeah, I don't know if anyone's. I know it's a the wrong end of the day in some ways for things like this. Um, well, maybe on a day before everybody is totally finished, leave work a little early, four four thirty, um, something like that. Does that work, Jane, Ben, Robin? In general, that would work for me on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And those, those are the days you're in, right, Ben? Yep, yeah. So what if we were to do all three site visits 
in the late afternoon oh, on the Pat, day we you. were going to do the early morning <laughs> one. Yep. On the 6th. On the 6th. Instead of, instead of meeting at 8, because that's difficult for Hetty, if we met at 4 or 4.30, whatever works for those of you who have a, a work schedule. And it take a couple hours to do everything we're talking about. So we'd have to start maybe with the Civil War tablets, see them quickly, and then move on to the other stuff. Whatever, whatever um, order everyone thinks is good, but but if we have three site visits, if we could compact it into one meeting and do it at a time when Hetty is comfortable to be there, um, yeah. I could do that on the sixth. I wouldn't mind combining the um, demolition site visit and the cemetery, but maybe we maybe put the Civil War tablets off. I mean, I. I'm a little concerned that we'll be kind of worn out and not, I don't know, not quite reverential enough. <laughs> well, you know what, Robin, you're right because the Civil War tablets aren't time sensitive. Right. right. Mm -hmm. But if we, the demolition review site visit and the other site visit yeah. are time sensitive. So sure. maybe do those two in the afternoon, late afternoon, whatever time you all can start that shouldn't take more than an hour or so yeah i mean if some of us want to use that map and go through the headstones bit by bit with ben everybody doesn't have to stay for that mm -hmm. yeah so right. having, having just said that tuesdays and thursdays are good for me too <laughs> <Tuesday, laughs> thursday the sixth is the only one of those days where i have a 430 to 530 uh, obligation. Sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good on Tuesday the 4th. Uh, DRB meeting. How about okay. the 13th? May the 13th. Uh, that, that works for me. Yeah, in the afternoon I could do it, not in the morning. That works for me. That that works for me. Okay, let's say okay. four o'clock then. Yeah. What are you saying, Jan? Four o'clock. Does that work, Hetty? Yep. Because it'll and be for a while. So yeah. that's good. Yeah, that so sounds we'll great. So we'll do the um, Pleasant Street site, we'll do the cemetery, and we'll do the demolition site. But maybe yep. do the demolition site first because we're going to end up at the cemetery with the Pleasant Street view. Well, we're in the cemetery when we look at the, the, the demolition. It's right. Like, What's the demolition site? She's talking about the 11 East Pleasant, right? No, I'm talking about Ben said we have to, there's oh, a yeah. demolition request. Well, where yeah. Is yeah, yeah, where is that? And so maybe we should do that first yeah. and then go to the, the East Pleasant and the cemetery. Mm -hmm. There you are, yeah. And maybe make Tuesday the 18th the rain date then? Okay. Because we need a rain date. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so sounds that sounds good to me. Um, so the we don't have to belabor or talk about um, in depth too much because I don't know the details fully. But the demolition is will be familiar to folks. It's the uh, and it's it's unfortunate because it's a nice house, but it's the four sixty two Main Street um, where the carriage house was. I believe you all put a delay on the carriage house and mm -hmm. then lift, lifted it, but um, they're proposing to demolish the house I knew that was gonna happen yeah, yeah. Our units in there don't they <laughs> wow we asked about that chance yeah we that, went for the site visit and they said oh no 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 they yeah. don't love this house we're gonna maintain it blah 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 oh, right sake. right <laughs> probably listening we should be careful yeah so okay. well that's all right we we, we the, the intent right. at the time yeah. was that it was going to be maintained yeah well we don't have to approve it right away We'll see. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, okay. so we'll, we'll go start, there first. We'll start at then... two. Then, okay. Yeah, and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll shoot uh, John Robleski an email and um, kind of get that on his radar as so well. So we'll meet there at four o'clock on the thirteenth, or if it's raining, we'll meet there at four o'clock on the eighteenth. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go on to the Pleasant Street West Cemetery. Yeah, yeah. And okay. everybody can make that rain date if it comes to it. 
Yep. Okay. All right. So great. I'm glad that's all worked out. And so now we will invite public comment. If there's any. Member I don't of see anyone in the. Okay. Yeah, they gave up. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, there might, there might be one other, uh, demolition. Um, they haven't submitted their full application yet. Um, but it's a house, uh, literally on the border of Shootsbury and Amherst. I think like it's actually straddling the border, um, on, on Leverett road. And, um, it's a older couple that kind of just doesn't need the structure anymore. So I, I'll try to move that process along to see if, see what their intentions are, if they wanna move forward with it, but there might be another application to review for that meeting as well. Does that mean we get a, a joint meeting with the Shootsbury Historical Commission too? Yeah, I, was, I, was, I don't know how it works. I think maybe like there's a, a third of the building that they can definitely demolish without our review, but. <laughs> Are there any unanticipated items? I was just going to say one thing um, about finding new members. Um, obviously, we're down two. Uh, we're short two. Um, the I talked to Angela Mills. She's the town manager's executive assistant and kind of like runs the process of soliciting new members. Um, she was saying, like in the past, in the past ninety days no one has submitted uh, an application that, and checked the box for either historical or local historic district. So they don't, at this point, they don't have anything on file for like someone who's uh, want, shown interest in volunteering um, for the board. So I kind of asked her like, what, what do we do? How do we handle this situation? And she recommended first starting with the current board members and asking if to just like, uh re help with any recruitment if you know people who might be interested and haven't served before or um or have served in the past or ha or have served in the past yeah for that matter have served in the past so um i thought uh there's kind of that there's the application or the citizen activity form um and a process to kind of submit your intent um so uh that is available on the town's website. Um, I can email the link out, but uh, if you all have anyone in mind, um, certainly I think they'll maybe keep the, you know, keep it open until they get like a critical number of applications and then do the interviews. Um, I don't know what that number is exactly, but um, maybe it's two, I don't know. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I thought I'd start there and then you know, maybe put out an email to like the, there's like the Western Mass, like architecture group. Um, there's, you know, certainly maybe like uh, Pioneer Valley historical organizations. I'm not totally sure, but maybe just start putting out information. Of course they do have to be Amherst residents. So um, yeah. I think in the past, uh, the town an announcement of that kind has been put on the town. Yeah. Well. Yeah. The thing is there's so many vacancies right now, like a lot, like, and I think even the planning board and zoning board of appeals have impending vacancies. So I, I did see that there is some uh, announcements on the website and social media, but you know, it's, it, it lists like 10 different boards and I feel like historical kind of gets lost in there a little bit. Um, so yeah, that's, yeah. Um, so, yeah. There is a um, kind of Pioneer Valley history network mm -hmm. um, that I, I can put something out on that. Okay. Well, I can, uh, I'll draft up an email and send it to you guys. That kind of shows like the, mm -hmm. where to click here if you're interested kind of thing. And then you all can send that out to whom, whomever. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank yeah. you, Ben. Um, Robin, do you want to comment at all on the, we can put this on the next agenda, but do you want to comment on the, um, the 
procedure process that uh, you've for uh, the Mill River sent, for Mill River. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I sent that. Uh, I guess I just sent that to you and and then mm -hmm. uh, I'm just trying to define a framework that fits within the guidelines for eligibility and funding for um, CPA projects for the Mill River project. And I just finally pulled together a, a draft kind of proposal for how they could come forward and request funding. And it involves um, administrative uh, CPA funding from the administrative budget category, which is different from historic preservation. So um, it was, it's a, it's a be beginning, my beginning attempt to say, is this a, kind of a good way to move forward? So if Ben could, I just got it out today. So if Ben could forward it and we can talk about it at mm -hmm. the next um, committee, I can, okay. we can go from there, but hopefully, hopefully I wrote something that was clear enough that will help drive the discussion. Okay, thank you. We'll put that. Um, yeah, that's a good thing to discuss and yep. address that. Uh, finally, the next meeting date, and we have that. So, yes, what's left? I move, we adjourn. I second. second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. No roll call needed. <laughs> thank you so much. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Thank you, Jane. Thank you. Yeah. I, I Thank you all. Look forward to seeing you all in person in yep. a seminary. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> site visits. <laughs> Good night, yeah. everybody. And then don't forget to send me the minutes. In yep. your, and yep. Jane, I'm sending you an email right now, so you haven't finished yet. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank, Thank you all. Good night, Good night everybody. everybody.